All right, guys, welcome to episode 32 of Prepared, your, your weekly, now now sometimes fortnightly, TBC Breakdown. Welcome back, guys. Uh, we got a bunch of stuff to cover this week. Uh, mainly, uh, a lot of it's going to be talking about the Blizzard Classic Dev interview that a lot of people have seen over the last week. Uh, a lot of things that were mentioned, uh, a lot of details that were, I guess shown through the interview that were necessarily said that can be inferred through the interview um and we're going to talk about that and as well as that there's a whole bunch of other stuff i want to talk about like there's a massive pvp issue right now that needs to be addressed that they need to fix at some mm. point um and there's always the season of mastery launch which has been uh interesting i guess we could say interesting season of mastery stats to look over as well Hey folks, before we continue the podcast, I just have to say a quick thank you because today's podcast is sponsored by Skillshare. Skillshare is an online community with thousands of tutorials and classes on how to do almost anything. If there's ever a skill or hobby you want to try, chances are Skillshare has a class on how to do it. They have ad-free online classes on video editing, photography, and even general skills like cooking. I've used many online tutorials myself. It's literally how I learned to edit in Final Cut and do almost everything I do online. I really like the tutorial with YouTuber Marquise Brownlee on YouTube success, showing how he shoots, plans, and edits his YouTube videos. And best of all, you can check it out for free. The first 1,000 of my subscribers to click the link in the description below will get a one month free trial of Skillshare. So check it out. You can start expressing and exploring your creativity and it helps the podcast and it helps our sponsor Skillshare. So check it out, click the link and let's get back into the podcast. Thanks guys. But yeah, how are you doing Zareen? We we missed you the last time. Are you feeling better? Yeah, I'm feeling better. I mean, it, 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 as better as I could feel, you know, I'm definitely somebody who has a lot of uh, one medical issues, two seasonal depression. So, you know, it took me like two hours to get out of bed today and then start my day. So I was just like, it's it's one of those days where I don't even know how I got here into this seat, and I'm just like, shit. This is a lu- this is a lucky day. This is a lucky day that I got out of bed. <laughs> <laughs> Rolled the dice. No, uh, no discipline with my uh, depression. So, how, how was your Thanksgiving though? At least, did you see family and all that? No, no, I canceled on them and told them I was uh, too depressed to, to go <laughs> down. So. Yeah. So we'll start with a light topic today. Yeah, yeah, yeah. No, no, no. We're learning. We always get the the depressing stuff out at the start, and then we go to the other stuff. Oh, yeah. I know it's one of those things where, like, you know, going to see your family is uh, something that uplifts a lot of people. For me, um, I love my family, and I wouldn't want them to see me in a depressed state. So I kind of like save them from me type thing. Even though I know they'd love to see me, I'm more so like just want to get my shit together before I get other people involved. So. Yeah. Yeah, well, I mean, I mean, I'm in, I'm in Korea. I haven't seen my family in, in like two years because of COVID. <laughs> I I can't leave. Otherwise, mm-hmm. I can't. I don't know if I can come back for a long time. It's, it's going to be too much of a true, pain. true. Yeah. Actually, I didn't. I didn't even think about that. Yeah, oh. it's it's okay. You got to do what I do, Zarine. Is, is where you're like the weird foreigner at the in laws place, and uh, because they think you're the weird foreigner that doesn't eat Korean food very well, they've convinced now that. Fried chicken is the appropriate food to order for all family gatherings, which I'm totally mm. okay with. I think that is the correct decision to make. Fried chicken is the correct food to have at all family gatherings. So, yeah. Yeah. Not every family gathering has changed from Korean food to fried chicken. Oh, my because God. Because of me. Uh, but yeah, good times. Uh, it seems like they ain't wrong, so. You yeah, know. yeah. I mean, they're not wrong. Korean fried chicken is very good. But yeah, um, yeah. So uh, to get to get the the depressing stuff out of the way, we got a little bit of the the old the old Bobby K coming in, yeah. coming in hot with the. <sighs> I don't even know what to call it. He's just uh, not very good timing. I will say, not very good timing to be having this all all this stuff come. I know there's a little bit of old news, but we'll, we'll just go glance over it briefly because I don't know what else can be really be said besides that. It's just you know disappointing that more and more stuff like this keeps coming out and Blizzard doesn't really seem to be doing much or they, they seem to be doing much but I don't know if it's just like are they going to do things differently now they said they would but now another stuff about Bobby K has come out they own CEO is he going to step down I haven't seen anything about that they've basically just gone almost silent at least I don't think I saw anything about him stepping down or anything like that yeah I mean it's it's the normal thing you do with social media. Like, um, 
having been somebody in the the social media spotlight, uh, you take like uh, so like the comms team. Um, the number one thing you should do when you're under heat is shut the fuck up. Like like the comms team is just like shut the fuck up. Don't say anything. So even if you say something good, there's no way it's fucking good enough. Like you can't say anything good enough at this moment to to remedy anything. So if you're somebody who's under fire, just shut the fuck up, right? Uh, things eventually blow over, unfortunately, as human beings. Uh, we get distracted by other shit. So if you disappear for a while, nobody fucking ca- cares after a bit, right? Like Ghost Crawler, after the whole thing with like him and the Cosby room and shit like that, he just shut the fuck up about stuff. Like he was digging his own hole for a bit, and then he just shut the fuck up, and now everybody like talks to him like normal again on Twitter. Um, so all you got to do is just shut the fuck up, and you're good. So that that's the number one thing is just what is it it's the comps uh, disengage disengage from social media is the uh the term they use so yeah if bobby just shuts the fuck up uh it'll all blow over and people will forget because the company has to go through its day-to-day operations unless people completely strike and like don't want to you know uh potential or people want to potentially lose their jobs but at the same time working in the gaming industry is a passion project so a lot of game or a game uh developers take advantage of employees because they're passion projects right like I did shout casting for free for years before I even got a dollar for it. Um, and then when Riot like approached me and they were like, hey, uh, come work for us. They could have told me I make $5 a year, $50,000 a year, $500,000 a year. It wouldn't have mattered. I would have taken the job no matter what, right? Yeah. So I-, I was doing it for free. So a lot of these guys will do whatever they're doing for free because they like doing it. So people will get back to work eventually because they like doing their job. <laughs> so it's... Uh, it's very hard to stand on that ground. So unless it hurts their bottom line a lot, then I don't know what's going to happen to him. So like, you know, he, 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 people like called for his resignation and shit. And there's like all these fucking signatures. Um, and there's like all these signatures from Blizzard employees asking for his resignation. And then all he says is just like, Hey, uh, I'll resign if the workplace issues aren't fixed soon. And that's like all he said, Right. He'll consider leaving if the workplace issues aren't fixed soon. I like the word soon so, as well, because it's something my, my we'll wife has consider, told me about, because soon right? is, a, is a term that you can use for anything, any length of time. <laughs> so she knows it's if relative. I say soon, it means that uh, never, <laughs> usually, because I just keep saying soon if, if it's something that I don't know, then it could never happen. Yeah, yeah, we're, we're going soon, or uh, I'll be there for the podcast soon. Like <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> um. Yeah, soon is like a relative term. But he also said consider, he'll consider resigning if workplace issues aren't fixed soon. So Oh god, he he's like those those characters in 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 like I like to read Chinese web novels, Zarine. It's one of my okay. my side things that I read. It's very popular now. Um, is, there, is there like a, a term for that? Because I know there's it's like, like Wuxia. Like, I think it's like Wuxia. And there's, there's a few genres Wuxia. and things. And yeah. Wuxia. Okay. Yeah. So I, I read those. He's like the protagonist. They always have oaths that you swear in all these like martial arts genres where if you swear this oath, the, the world will, will kill you if you break the oath. But then the villain always has, uh, has ways they word it where they can break the oath without actually breaking the oath. It's, it's like yeah, one of those, those, those double oaths. It's like a monkey paw thing. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I didn't say, I didn't say this. It's like, oh shit. Well, technically he's right. So <laughs> just twisting it. Yeah. So, oh. Yeah. I mean, I have the Blizzard stock up, which is an interesting thing. Uh, this stock has tanked. I, I know the last time we ever talked about any Blizzard stuff, we were saying like, is, is your stock actually going to be affected? There was a drop, but we'll mm-hmm. just recover back up again. It, it has verifiably just tanked uh 24 percent in the last month oh yeah so it's so. a good time to buy no <laughs> <laughs> the prepared podcast does not uh does not legitimize any of zarine's takes and stocks do not buy any, any, do not make financial yeah, decisions based on zarine's takes <laughs> yeah absolutely not absolutely fucking not I, I i don't think i own any uh any stock except for uh retirement and uh very light mutual funds so <laughs> yeah so i mean it's interesting to see if, if this amount of actual stock decline will actually make the company do anything or they'll try to just blow it over and see because I don't, I don't know if they have like a better alternative is the thing is they if they fire him they still need someone to do 
day-to-day -day operations. So who would they bring in? Like, how would they even fix it? Would it even really stop the, the stock tanking? Because they have a whole bunch of other issues beyond that. But, I mean, it, the thing is, it's... It's not even like, uh, this is something I get into when I talk about this topic with other people or, or Blizzard as a whole about how WoW, WoW needs more work and all of that is that Blizzard's, Activision Blizzard is such a big company. They have so many titles and so many genres that like, it's easy to think about WoW and how much WoW could be better, but then you forget that Candy Crush is pulling in, like well, I have the numbers here, Candy Crush is pulling in record profit every single year. They started with, uh, let's see, 2014, Candy Crush brought in 574 million. Five years later, Candy Crush brought in 740 million. And then 2020, Candy Crush brought in 857 million in profit. And there's just profit alone. So it's easy to forget that, yeah, uh, Blizzard, uh, Activision Blizzard owns Candy Crush as well. <laughs> so uh, it, it's insane. Yeah. yeah, you make you make a ton of money off of mobile games. Like we've talked about this many times, where mobile games and mobile development is what game companies consider the future. Because even though like a lot of people don't consider mobile gaming like real gaming, it's a real money maker. So it's because casual people will drop money on mobile games. Mobile games are extraordinarily popular all throughout the world. Not maybe as much in the West, but. The West makes up a, a small portion of the amount of money that a company makes if they are global. So, yeah, it's uh, the the global market is seen as the future by companies that care about their profits. Yeah, yeah. So I mean, it's it's interesting. It's it's just interesting to see what will happen long term with all of this. But I mean, on top of that, Blizzard was also doing the the uh, um, Black Friday sale you, for people that saw this. So some people were angry about this. I, I didn't really care, honestly, because it's it's kind of whatever at this point. Save up to 30% on Burning Crusade Classic upgrades. They did a whole <laughs> a Dark Portal pass. 30% uh, off uh, Black Friday, by the way. I, I love you Americans because I always get the sale benefits despite not having any Thanksgiving over here in Korea. Uh, the stores don't miss out on your chance to have Black Friday sales. And hmm. neither does Blizzard, apparently. But I, I feel like this is just more, you know, it's uh, obviously people are just going to not be very happy about this. But this is just the same. It's going to be the same people that aren't happy about the state of the shop already, which is more so. I don't think this is actually anything new. This is just Blizzard running a sale on what's already there. I, I really... Uh have no clue like how they're gonna reverse this trajectory i guess right yeah. they diablo 4 stuff is like what everybody's banking on being a game that people will play for years and years and years so if it uh if it is then that's good but there's a lot that needs to change in the company before a lot of people will play their games now um yeah yeah it's definitely like kind of tainted unlucky. a lot Yes, exactly. I think that's a, a really great way to put it is, yes, it seems very, very tainted. Yeah, someone uh, someone once explained to me in, in marketing that uh, that the, the impression of a company and, and your product and all of that is seen through a lens. So the easiest way to think it, about it for the public is that like there's a lens or a filter in front, like an Instagram filter in front of everything they do. And then mm -hmm. that filter just is what everything gets passed through on the way to the public. And then the public gets whatever the filter is and right now the filter is really really bad it's a very poor quality instagram filter they got on on everything blizzard does so the, it, it just means like uh, if if good news was good news they have to do good news plus 30 percent just to get to that same level of good news to mm -hmm. kind of like redeem themselves so it just makes it harder harder on them if they don't like break the spiral at some point i mean we talked about like trust right yeah. as a currency they have very little player trust and uh, other companies like Riot just keep building player trust, right? Um, I don't know if you saw like the whole. Uh, do you see uh, Kojima talked about uh, Arcane? Oh yeah, I did. Yeah, yeah, yeah. That that was like a legendary thing for them over in the office. They were just like, "What the fuck?" For you guys who don't know, um, Kojima, who's like a very famous uh, game director developer, uh, he he uh, he said that he watched Arcane and that it was like absolutely amazing. And that he got an offer to see the premiere and he had turned it down and he regrets it. So <laughs> it was uh it was insane that Riot was just like, 
it was really funny too because then the C- the CEO of Riot was or the president CEO of Riot uh, was like, "Hey, you want to come to season two premiere?" Like instantly, right? Like that's like that that's how you do it yeah. in terms of like having a casual conversation publicly so that people could see and then just get hyped about shit. So yeah, yeah, they deserve to be killing. It. Oh, absolutely, absolutely. Like they they understand they understand what it's like to throw money into a black hole and eventually get something out of it. Yeah. I don't even know if I'd say get something out of it. Something manifests next to them that's not even like related to the hole directly. Yeah, uh, they, yeah. they just throw money into it and then they get like something amazing next to them. So it, 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 it somehow comes back. The universe all comes back to them. Yeah. Um, I mean, uh, to, to kind of shift gears a little bit and talk about uh, some of the other stuff, they, at, at, least, uh, at least Blizzard is doing server transfers at last. <laughs> uh, 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 to some <laughs> level uh, to only some <laughs> some servers uh, uh, some people are happy some people are not because they're on the servers that aren't getting the like the right transfers and, and such but they are finally enabling free character transfers or have enabled free character transfers on, on some servers to some other servers but it's uh it's it's not going to solve any population issues and uh i know zyrene i believe rain is moving right rain is, is yes server moving it, like yeah. everyone is Both still like- moving to to like two to three servers all the alliance are still going to benediction and all the horde are going to either felino or white main at least on na that's how it is yeah uh, that depends on where your arena partners are going yeah on all honesty um yeah the fucking uh my Rain and Lucid, both of my alliance guilds, are going to uh, Benediction. It's because even though um, Fairlina, uh, if I check Ironforge Pro, um, even though Fairlina has like one of the healthier uh, populations of like, you know, 3,700, it was like 4,400 alliance. Um, and it doesn't even have to do with like, somebody was like, oh, Rain's leaving because as soon as the population's not in their favor and they get ganked, they, they, like they it was like rain's been ganking us since phase like three or four uh and now they can't handle the heat and i'm just like dude there's literally no world pvp like it's like we're on (laughs) flying mounts i don't think i've like fought a horde in the wild in months dude it's like literally has nothing to do with that it's all just population on your server on your side for recruitment it means we have less arena partner uh, potential here than on Benediction, and we have less potential for like recruiting good players. And Benediction is just going to be the place where all of the all the alliance players are. And it's actually really funny because at one point, um, Benediction just had um, it had like nine percent of the overall alliance population in the world. Well, now they're over ten percent. They have se- they have seventeen point three thousand, and there's a hundred and fifty three thousand alliance players. So they have almost like eleven percent of the population of alliance in the world. That's that's counting uh, EU and uh, and the West, and I believe also OCE. It's not it doesn't it doesn't count um, China, I believe uh, Chinese or Korean servers. I think it's just all of the West uh, servers: America, yeah. Europe, Russia. Yeah, because if yeah. it was Chinese servers, oh, God, God knows what the population no, of the Chinese fucking knows that, dude. Is. Yeah, it's really weird because um, I actually think the Chinese players actually like the alliance more than the horde. Just that's like something that I've just uh, yeah, like, I'm not sure. Kind of experience. That, that's it's like, actually it's like interesting data because I, from what I understand, Blizzard has a giant amount of profit coming in from the China servers, mm-hmm. but we have no yeah. like data there because it's it's all in Chinese. I see on some Chinese website. Or, or it's just not or available. It's just not available, know, yeah, because it's China. Yeah, but my, uh, every time I see somebody who's playing like WoW in Chinese, it's usually an Alliance player. Um, maybe in TBC, like it swapped, but yeah, I mostly saw. But also, I know I know China likes a very certain aesthetic. Um, it's the reason that League of Legends has moved to being like your default. Uh, <laughs> your default character look is uh, hu- like anime husbando or waifu, like. And the skins are all like Eastern inspired. It's kind of, it's become the default aesthetic for uh, League of Legends, right? Yeah, that's um, why I need every Ari skin that gets released, Serene. Yes, exactly. exactly. <laughs> no, no, no it, 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 it's actually very interesting because the uh, popularity or attraction of characters, there's actually a guy um, who did a bunch of data back at Riot on certain characters and where they get played. 
and if they're considered attractive or not via surveys. And Ezreal is seen as like really attractive in China, like really attractive. Really um, interesting. Yes, by both by both men and women is like seen as one of the most attractive characters. Um, yeah. And in the West, no. Yeah, that's <laughs> like, definitely like, a very Asia yeah. thing. That is definitely yeah. a very Asia yeah. thing. Especially I could see that in like a Japanese. It almost feels like a, that, that like it'd be something that's really popular in J Japan in particular. Like that hairstyle with like the f kind of almost feminine looks. Yep, just a little like thinner and stuff like that. Yeah. I think Viego is also another one recently that's been like seen as like really attractive and a little more Western too. So, but yeah, it, there's some there's some really interesting stats out there. Snow, there's some really interesting stats that you can uh, pull up. Um, actually, you can't you can't pull them up, but there's like internal data at Riot where uh, this is just like a side tangent. One of my favorite stats that was. Um, that uh women will typically only play attractive female characters typically right they'll typically only play attractive female characters uh whether they're playing adc like miss fortune ash uh caitlin uh or they're playing support like seraphine sona etc um and this makes makes them so that they basically play only support or ad carry and sometimes mid lane because there's a lot of attractive female characters there men don't care if the character is male or female or attractive or not they will play it so hmm. typically women only play attractive female characters which limits them to roles because there's not a lot of attractive female top laners or junglers um which are actually the least played roles by women so it was actually very bad back when i saw this data at least so it's very interesting that men don't give a fuck what they're playing <laughs> women seem to care a little bit more actually so yeah, well um, maybe the men use my my uh rating system where i rate my champions that i want to play based on how annoying they are to the other people you like hyena warwick <laughs> <laughs> i told you man i i play melzaha i play zoe i play everything oh, that yeah, makes it life true. hell that's for true. my opponent <laughs> that's true yeah i think i think their yeah. least played um their least played type was the monster characters they don't really seem to like gravitate towards monster characters oh man so. nunu nunu mid <laughs> you admit, the most hilarious champion to play yeah but it, was it was really strange it was really strange so like because it's something that i had never considered as a guy i was just like this character strong me play character this character female me play character mm. like i don't care right um but i uh, it's apparently aesthetic does matter to some people yeah yeah i mean it's interesting they play games differently like i have, I have a friend that like this is still side tangent but i have a friend that uh only plays Arams. Like she only plays Arams, but she loves playing Arams, and that's all she plays. Never, never ever plays any like actual like the main League of Legends game. Just plays Arams. It's perfectly yeah. happy playing only Arams. Yeah, I mean, some people just don't want to be as competitive. I have male friends who only play Arams because they fucking hate ranked, um, and it makes them mad. <laughs> like one of my friends, um, actually, for a great example, is Captain Flowers, um, my roommate. He does not play ranked, and he hasn't played ranked in a very long time. A uh, few years, actually, because he knows what it does to him. Uh, I played a normal game with him once, and he was like, he was, I think he was like eight zero and three on Skarner, and then he died, and then he leaves the Discord call when he dies. <laughs> so he's eight one and three, leaves the Discord call, and then he ends the game eighteen one and thirteen. He got ten more kills, ten more assists before the game was over. And the people were like, come back into the call. And he's like, no. <laughs> he, he was he was he was tilted as fuck that he died one time in a situation that he shouldn't have died. And he was like. He's like, I leave the call because I know that I'm going to say something. And that's something. <laughs> it's not going to be very fucking nice. <laughs> <laughs> oh, shit. Uh, God damn it. I. <laughs> It reminds, there's another time where I was in the office and um, poor Emily, it was her first day, I think. And she was playing with me, uh, Flowers and like another coworker. So it was four people and then a random in the game, uh, just like a normal. Right. And what ended up happening is I ganked the lane and then Annie just did something really fucking stupid. Just Annie did something so dumb. And I turned to Flowers and I go, what the fuck is this Annie doing? And it turns out it was Emily. I thought it was the random in the game. <laughs> but it's Emily who's literally like, a, like 
right across from me in the office <laughs> and flowers flowers just starts laughing and i'm like what and then after the game she comes over and she's like i was the annie and i was like oh fuck dude. <laughs> i i just well i didn't even like go off i was like what the fuck was annie doing <laughs> oh shit yeah you know, god these are just like major tangents i understand yeah, yeah, but it's yeah. just Good, good times in video games that I'm yeah. sure people can relate to, dude. Oh, oh no, I, I still, uh, I still say five, five on five in house League of Legends. Still, some of the most fun you can have with, with, with your friends, as long as you, you, uh, you, you are be careful of the the people who, like we said, have a competitive drive or competitive spirit mm-hmm. that is a little bit, uh, a, oh, <laughs> like yeah. a little bit triggered at times. Like, like you've seen, um, to bring this back to WoW a little bit, um, you, you've you've seen, uh, like with my partner Reality when I do twos. Like we have, me and him have very different um, competitive drives. I'm more of like the sun. I'll try to analyze and see what we did wrong. I I rarely ever get triggered on stream or ever, ever get upset. But he's mm. the type where I, I know, like as soon as he starts, he'll he'll get really angry. He'll say dumb stuff, and I'll be like, okay, man, um, maybe we should queue tomorrow. Let's queue tomorrow because <laughs> I know like he's gonna go on a tilt. I I can sense when he's going down the tilt lane. And now I gotta be like, okay, man, like, like let, let's just call it for today. We can we can do more queues tomorrow. It's all good. Don't worry about it. And is he like, no, fucking queue up again, yeah, bitch? Yeah, <laughs> like, yeah, yeah. Like, press that button. No, We're going we will not in. lose to them. We are better than them, and I can't stand losing them. We're gonna queue again until we beat them, and then we lose another fifty reigning. Yeah, uh, that's actually like that's actually exactly how I am too. Uh, I'm the same as reality. I don't get as tilted. But I'm kind of a mix between you two where I'm just like, if I lose, I like to sit there and think about why we lost. And I like to go again immediately because I know like what's going to happen is if I run into those people tomorrow or that comp tomorrow, I'm not going to be as sharp as if I had just done it again immediately. Yeah. Right. Or tried something new. So it's uh, I understand fresh perspective can be good taking a break and stuff. But I'm more of like a grinder, you know. I'm the guy in Dark Souls who throws himself at the fucking boss a hundred times. Like, <laughs> if you guys ever played Dark Souls three, um, there was a guy in my chat when I played Dark Souls three who trolled me and said, "Attack the old lady." He's like, "Oh yeah, you should attack this old lady here who's sitting in the chair like near the start, like only like maybe like thirty minutes into the game." And so I attack her, and then he starts cracking up in chat because the dancer of the Boreal Valley comes out, which is like considered one of the hardest bosses in that game, and I proceed to then throw myself at that boss for like five hours in a row. <laughs> and I'm, I'm like, I'm like level 10 or something stupid. I'm like soul level 10. And it took me 180 tries to beat that boss. And then I eventually did it. Um, and I remember halfway through, he was like, dude, it was just a joke. You can just keep moving on with the game. And I was like, no, I need to <laughs> fucking beat this boss. You don't under fucking stand me. <laughs> I was like, I have to do it. It's on principle. This is about pride now. Because I'm like, people could beat this game fucking naked, okay? I could beat this boss. I just need to be good enough. <laughs> I just keep throwing myself at it over and over again. Oh, man. That, that's, it, but those are the games that I like. I like those yeah. types of games. So, yeah, but people are transferring to um, uh, Fairlina if they're Horde and White Mane. And then they're also transferring to Benediction. But Benediction is like considered the promised land for Alliance. Oh. And it's like, oh, man. My guild like didn't want to go originally. But then they started like warming up to the idea so it was a uh, a strange process because it happened it happened like it was almost like the um the stages of denial you know where it was like no we don't need to go to benediction we're we're, we're good enough you know like you're just you know com- complete and utter denial then it was eventually like you know well you know it, it's a last resort kind of thing or you know okay we're, we're gonna we're gonna just stop speed running instead like you know bargaining at that point where you're just like we're gonna stop speed running it's okay we're a casual guild now uh and then it was like we're just gonna fucking transfer okay we're gonna bring back speed we're gonna transfer and then we're gonna speed run again okay like <laughs> eventually it was just full acceptance of everything well, the thing is like uh, i heard all the pvp is a transferring off as well i was watching chan stream yes. and yeah even all the alliance pvp is uh transferring over the bed addiction from felina so yes, alliance are. is just gonna be like a ghost town probably Yes, uh, what ended up happening is I think Natural Causes and Atlas went as well as a bunch of other guilds and then um, uh, the ones that were really left were like Rain, Suop, which if you guys have ever played like um, or watched League of Legends, competitive League of Legends back in the day uh, with CLG, they're, they're one of their players yeah. for them, Nian Tonso. Nian Tonso, yeah, Nian Tonso is a really good fucking WoW player. Like we're talking like Infernal Gladiator, like Nian on multiple characters. Yeah. Yeah, he's got um, like five tunes that he plays on. Yeah. 
<laughs> yeah. Uh, he's a very good character, very good player, and he's the uh, the GM of uh, Suop, which is Shut Up and Pull. Um, so yeah, he's uh, the GM of like the big Alliance PvP guild, and they have been like adamant against transferring for a long time. But Rain has like picked up some of their players, and we are transferring, and those players are coming with us. So a lot of those people in Suop are like, "Well, my arena partners are transferring, oh. so." We're going to transfer too. So Alliance is going to lose. I believe they're losing Rain. They're losing um, Suop. And I think Crusade, S Fans Guild, is also coming. So I'm sitting here going, like, Blizzard is literally about to make thousands, tens of thousands of dollars from us. Because, like, I'm transferring five characters. So I'm spending. Uh, it's like 25 each? I'm spending $125. Jesus. Just me. And then, like, the, the, the 40 people in my guild are like the 25 people who have two characters. They're making $50 per person 20, and there's 25 people, yeah, right? Because hardcore making... players always have at least two two characters. Yeah. No, I don't well, know any have, hardcore you, players. You are required. Yeah, it's you're, like it's you're required after. to have an alt in range. So it's like, yeah. Uh, so you're, they're just going to make a lot of money off of us. That's like $600, $700 off of like just those characters alone before you do anything else. And then you consider like how many Crusade has. <laughs> Because Crusade is like the biggest, biggest alliance guild on Fairlina by like a fucking mile. Like they, you know how like Olympus was like a meme where it was like Olympus one, Olympus two, Olympus thirteen. <laughs> yeah. Um, Crusade was big and stayed big. Crusade I think yeah. had like four or five raid teams at one point, and they just, oh man, they like it's everybody actually, was. They, it's amazing they actually broke that curse where they actually kept like all the uh, raid teams intact somehow. Yeah. Um. It was weird because when uh, when it went from 40 to 25, man, they because I actually wanted to join Crusade on my Shaman at first because one of my friends plays there that I like, you know, really like playing with. And they were like, they literally don't have raid spots because they had to remove 15 people from every raid and they tried to make like spinoff raids and stuff. And they were like, we literally are not recruiting. And I'm a fucking Shaman. <laughs> I'm like, what? I'm like, are you fucking kidding me? They're like, yeah, we're actually like not recruiting. Uh, uh, it was it was sad, man. But yeah, sometimes big guilds have that shit. You know, speaking of big guilds, what the fuck ever happened to Hoagie Haven Heroes, dude? Like, they used to be. Uh, in yeah, they 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 disappeared. Like, uh, I mean, they they were one of their raids almost merged with uh my Felina raid. One one yeah, of their raids. Yeah, they just. Cause, there, there was a meme on Fairlina Horde for a long time where it was like, uh, God, I forget the fucking meme exactly, but it was like, there's, there's like no Horde, there's just Hoagie Haven Heroes, or it's like, <laughs> eventually everyone comes to Hoagie. So it was basically like, Hoagie had so many fucking raid teams um, that, that everybody was joining them, just every single guild would like merge with them, they were just adopting so many guilds. They were like, by far the biggest guild. I remember when it was, uh, it was time to do Scarab Lord in classic. It was, uh, you want you, Hoagie had to be your friends because they I think they had, I think they had something fucking ridiculous. I want to say they had like 10 raid teams or something like that. <laughs> it was actually disgusting. I don't remember the exact number, uh, and I don't remember how many Scarab Lords they pumped out. Somebody will know the number. I want to say 13, um, but I don't know if that's true. They have 900 members act currently. I just don't know how active they are. I just haven't seen Hoagie Haven Hero members anywhere. So, yeah, is a uh, really strange. I wonder if they're one of the the buy buy uh, product raids that that had issues filling after a lot of the streamers kind of quit, where they had a lot of uh, streamer fans in the guilds that uh that, that stopped playing once the streamers stopped playing. Because that's what happened mm. with, uh, that's definitely what one of the issues we had in solo queue where uh, like most of the streamers in solo queue stopped. But it was, uh, I think when it was started, it was what, it was like Savix, it was Pint, uh, me and Bonnie, uh, Stoops, a whole bunch of people. And then by the end, it was literally just, I, I think the only ones left was just me and then Bonnie. It was literally the only ones left in there. And we have like the smallest uh. followings out of them and Savix was overpl overplaying uh, Final Fantasy. Hmm. So like a, yeah, a lot of the people followed them over. Players. At least that's how that's why where a lot of our solo queue people went. Hmm. Yeah. I mean the the player base definitely got fractured uh, a little bit there, but 
yeah, the transfers and stuff uh, definitely did not do, I think, what Blizzard was hoping for it to do. Uh, because, what was it? It was like, the the GM of Rain was hoping that what they would do is they would allow faction transfers, but they would allow things like, or sorry, not faction transfers, they would allow things like um, when you transfer from, uh, where when you transfer to Fairlina, you can only transfer as like an Alliance player for free, right? So like the low population Alliance servers could transfer to Fairlina, but like the Horde couldn't unless they paid, right? But even then, people would still probably pay to go to Benediction instead of Fairlina. So the thing that I think is really kind of fucked up is the transfer cooldown because I know people who have like just transferred to Fairlina and they're fucked because like literally everybody's about to leave. And I'm sitting here going like, I don't know why the transfer cooldown is as long as it is. Um, and in fact, maybe it should be even shorter. Uh, cause like one, it's blizzard saying no to money. Um, which that's strange for them. <laughs> uh, but two, it's kind of like, well, what, what's going to happen? Uh, like, what, what's the negative effect? Do you think somebody's going to like transfer to a server, farm all the mats, and then come over to that like other server and sell them all? Well, uh, like they spent real life money to go farming. Okay. Like, whatever. You guys sell wow tokens. Fuck it. Like, <laughs> it's, this, it's the same shit, but you're putting effort in. Yeah. Yeah, I, I know people are already being affected by it because uh, I think Chan was saying the other day, he, he was saying where, yeah, what, he's literally not transferred his Alliance Felina character yet because one of the peoples he knows is stuck on Felina. So he's sitting it out and waiting so that he has like an arena person there. And then yeah. they can transfer because you got to transfer your whole arena team at the same time. Yeah, somebody... Um, somebody mentioned it, it's probably to uh, uh, stop people from abusing ranking. And I think that might be true, but that's like a um, an archaic thing, right? Because you like, if I wanted to get Grand Marshal, what do I do? I go to a server that has like fucking nobody on it and just get bracket one or something with my boys. You know, I don't know. But then there's less bracket one spots, so that was like a classic thing. Yeah. So it'd be really, it'd be really strange uh, if they kept that around. I don't know. I feel like it just fucks people over, and like it's going to make people who get left behind quit the game or not play the game, and then they're losing like that person's income or like that person's st- subscription. So it'll be uh, it'll be really sh- interesting to see what happens with the people who are left behind and what they do. Uh, also, I heard that. Um, so strange thing, uh, you know how like there's placements and stuff like that for your arena team? Yeah. Right. Um, if you get a name change or you change servers and your name changes, you have to redo placements. But if you hmm. keep the same name. You don't. Interesting. So, so somebody was telling me that it's tied to your name. Which I, I thought was really weird. Because I was like, if I transfer to another server and I take that name with me, I'm, I'm technically Zyrene Benediction, not Zyrene Fairlina, you know? So I'm like, wouldn't that like... It like, does what, sound what like, a, like a weird, funky way that the client would work just because it's yeah. how they, they just programmed it back in the day. <laughs> Selling Zyrene for $100 on Benediction. If you actually have the name Zyrene on Benediction, hit me up because somebody actually has it. Uh, <laughs> <No. so. laughs> yeah. Yeah. There, there, there is a channel. There is a channel in the Benediction. By the way, the Benediction Discord is the best Discord I've seen for a server, hands down, period. Like, it's actually fucking insane how good it is. Like, I think we talked about this before yeah, where they have yeah. like graphs. Well, like, well, well better like than the Felina Discord, Zareen. The Felina Discord's a shit posting. <laughs> we talked about this before where it's like, oh, I fucking pulled it up for like a second and I was like, oh, that's a porn star. Like, I was like, like people are like posting memes of sh- and shit like that all day. That's we just, we like, don't one, even have a raid channel one, on Felina. It's got one channel. It's got one channel. Wait, let me go to the fucking Felina Discord again. This is both Horde and Alliance side. <laughs> Where is this thing? Where is it's this thing? mind-boggling well, that we literally don't even have something for recruiting or like filling raids yeah. or anything. It's literally there's n- there's nothing on filling the Discord. Yeah, they have four. They have four archive channels. That one of them was like Alinity with a hot dog. Another one was like some <laughs> some Asian cosplayer with her boobs out because EDG won worlds or something. It, and then God, it, and then there's one of like somebody sleeping in a bed. I don't know what this is. And then like the new text channel, the only one that's open is called Discord uh closing soon so yeah it's uh 
the, but you go to the benediction discord and the benediction discord is actually insane whoever's running this is like it's like it's nuts it's nuts there's so many channels I, you could literally hang out here all day there's just so there's so much shit here there's too much shit i'm overwhelmed but you could like pick a channel and go there and there's enough people engaging in it and then there's a bunch of recruitment stuff too and there's but there's a channel where you can buy your name from people so people are taking names of people that they know are coming <laughs> to benediction and selling their name for gold so if i if like if i had like fucking s uh, be right back then you get chan yeah right you get get chan's yeah, name he has chan, a lot of chan gold w chanimal like start just start taking all of chan's names take take every version of swine you can think of you know <laughs> <laughs> well i do have adam chan on the on the jom gaba server adam chan is for sale for for gold amount <laughs> but yeah so people are like um people are selling like let me let me go here let me go to the channel really quickly um so somebody was like trying to buy my name for me <laughs> so like one of my friends is trying to like like, like want to buy my name uh one of eyes i read um so we want to buy the name kraken nugget jeff womp wampa like people are taking people's names mudkips bony uh Kerrigan, Ping, Hell Yeah, Hell Yeah, Hell Yeah are spelled three different ways. <laughs> <laughs> Want to buy Yep Cock or JP? <laughs> <laughs> Want to buy Gnome Zone, Little Turtle, Spaz? <laughs> Want to buy European, EU? Like these names. Everybody wants these fucking names, dude. So it, it, you could just, you could make a bunch of money on Benediction right now just by typing in a bunch of people's names. Uh, and getting like different versions of it and then trying to sell those names to the people who are transferring over. So uh, it's uh, very interesting. Uh, but yes, that, that Discord is very, very well done. Uh, you know, it's good. Mafia scam? Yeah, the name Mafia. <laughs> it's, like, it's like, I know you'll pay anything to get the Zyrene name, so how much is it worth to you? <laughs> fuck, dude, fuck, fuck, fuck. <laughs> Transfer-wise, don't, don't know why the cooldown is what it is, so... Yeah, at this stage, I, I think there's there's just like nothing they can do, really. I mean, like, oh, you know what's also, you know what's what also do they fucked? even do? Yeah, you know what's also fucked is this gold limit, because that that's the thing, right? Is the gold limit is supposed to be there to stop people from doing like the botting shit, transferring gold over, etc. Right? Um, but everything on Fairlina is way more expensive than on Benediction. Haste pots are like 16 gold on Fairlina and they're like 12 on Benediction. People are buying, you know, you, you know the, um, all right. So like, uh, do you know Esquire, the mage streamer? Yeah. Who does yeah, like yeah. Sleep sure, boost yeah, all the time. Yeah. Yeah. He, he has like hundreds of thousands of gold at this point. I don't remember the exact number. I think it's like 400,000 or 700,000. He has like a multiple gold. Yeah, last time I, I um, popped into the stream, he was doing like a gold challenge where he was just amounting as yeah. much gold as he could. So yeah. Yeah. I, I think he has somewhere between 400 and 700,000. Uh, and there's like no way he's ever transferring that. Um, but what what what's going on is you know gigantic bags, the twelve hundred gold bag yeah. that you buy from the vendor, those retain their value typically. It's kind of like when people bought chrono boons and they would sell them for exact oh, yeah. price again. I mean, that's like how I transfer my gold to Felina. <laughs> yeah, you just you just bought a bunch of chrono boons, went yeah. over, and then just sold them at market value or like normal. Uh, hey, value. I made money. I made money on a chrono really? boons. <laughs> wow! I sold them on raid wow. day and I made money. Yeah, see, it's it's like that. Um, yeah. People are selling gigantic bags for a thousand gold, so they're selling them at a two hundred gold loss because there's so many of them on Benediction now. Because everybody thought of this exact same idea, so everybody's got like gigantic bags they're selling and undercutting each other like for a thousand gold instead of twelve hundred. So if you want gigantic bags, just look at the auction house instead of the actual fucking <laughs> buying them from the vendor. Jeez. So yeah, it, it's actually like you're taking a uh, what is that like a a sixth cut. So yeah, you're you're losing a decent amount of money to do that, but you're still getting your money over there. Good time to get some bags. Oh yeah, is a good time to get some gigantic bags if you need them. <laughs> oh my god, but yeah, the server transfer stuff. I I really uh, ah god, world PvP is dead with flying. Yeah, I mean that's why it, that's why server balance doesn't matter. It just matters how many people you have on your faction, right? Because before like. It was fine if it was 4,000 Horde versus 4,000 Alliance. Now it's like 4,000 Alliance is too low. Let's go to the 17,000 Alliance server. Like that's what matters. So, yeah. No. And I mean, it scales as well. It, it's, uh, it, there's a big difference between just like 
that little bit extra amount of players. It, it makes everything feel more alive oh, when yeah. you have that little mu- much more people. Like you can get enchants at any time of the day. And a mm-hmm. lot of that sort of stuff is really noticeable. It's like really, yep. really noticeable. I think one of the issues people have with Fairlina is like there's not that many people left. Um, I know relatively like 4,000 Alliance is still okay, but a lot of the people who are left just don't speak English. Um, there's a lot of people who are, are Brazilian and don't speak the same language. And so people get frustrated when they're doing normals and stuff. Oh so, yeah. I noticed yeah. that about Felina actually. That, that was one of the first things I noticed when I was leveling up on Felina is that the, you hit a certain time zone and suddenly everyone in my group was speaking Spanish. And I got very confused for a second when I was, I was in the middle of like, grouping and suddenly everyone just start typing in spanish yep spanish portuguese i have used google translate a lot in some uh instances so (laughs) oh man yeah it's it it can be frustrating for the players and then you go on to benediction and you just look at lfg uh and it's it's just insane so yeah there's people are going to be a lot happier on benediction now the question is are there going to be queues to get in how many layers are there going to be uh, that's the thing that's like a little worrying for some people because it's just becoming like Alliance super server. Yeah. Well, I mean, the thing is they can never convince anyone not to go after everything they've done because yeah. no one's ever going to listen to them ever again when it comes to that. Oh, yeah. yeah the, last to time, the last that's time they told do. people to not join was was when everyone transferred to like Argent Dawn or whatever the other dead servers are now. And then, and then yep. they just got abandoned there until now. Yeah, Benediction will definitely hit like 20,000 Alliance players. Like, no doubt in my mind that Benediction is just going to get bigger and bigger. So, yeah. But, uh, I mean, did you see the Blizzard Classic dev interview? Uh, uh, no, I, I have not seen this. Okay. So, uh, for people who don't know, um, Josh Cobat, uh, he, he was actually on up one of our early podcast episodes. He came in here to debate the, the plus minuses of the TBC boost and, and all of that. Uh, way back in the day. So uh, I, I won't play this because this is this is literally an hour long, but I will have it in the show notes so people don't want it, will watch it. I think it, he's a very good interview. He's very eloquent uh, with his questions and such. And he basically had an interview with Brian Birmingham, uh, the WoW Classic lead developer. And a lot of the stuff that came up, they, they had to kind of dance around certain topics because obviously uh, Brian Birmingham can't answer certain things because it's not he, he's like he's just not allowed to talk about certain things and he doesn't want to get in trouble in the same at the same time but what i did pull from watching the whole interview is that the classic team is really small it, it seems it is really small because they they had one statement during the um, podcast i'm not sure when it was because it's an hour long but I, when i was watching it i remember they said that the reason they haven't done stuff such as server transfers and mergers and things for Dead Realms faster is because to do that, they have to pull devs from critical tasks that they can't really spare because then they won't have someone on that, on that critical task, basically. And to me, that just showed, wow. Okay, so that, that just kind of confirms everything we've kind of said where it f- always feels like they make the changes, but they make them really slow or they make them six months down the line or they just do it so weirdly that that it just feels like the team's really small but this interview just kind of let me think yeah yeah i guess the team really is really small because they can't even implement really crucial things like getting dead server people onto a server that they can keep playing on and actually enjoy the game because they, they don't have the spare manpower to do so mm-hmm. which was uh honestly like pretty worrying uh, <laughs> that, that they have this this amount of, of people. But it, it, coming up, it almost goes back to the thing where we were saying before that it almost feels like Blizzard does treat WoW a lot like just this thing that they're just going to keep milking. They don't want to put more stuff into it, but they're just going to keep milking it because on their balance sheet, it doesn't match up to, like I showed earlier, the, the Candy Crush numbers where they have like the $900 million in profit almost last, last year. Right, and, and as big as WoW is, WoW isn't in that like, like that easy cash cow thing where where if MMOs are like traditionally really hard to keep milking in, in certain ways. I mean that's why they hired Holly Longdale over from EverQuest Classic because she's been so good at milking EverQuest all that time. Um, that it just seems that uh, <laughs> it seems that 
they just have this tiny team and they're just really, really limited in what they can do. It feels like they want to do stuff, but from the sound of the interview, they just don't have the manpower to, to implement a lot of these things. I mean, even right now, we can see that there's a real lack of of almost seemingly TBC changes or updates and things while Season of Mastery is hot and they're constantly like doing things in Season of Mastery. I'm actually curious to see how much of the team is dedicated to just Season of Mastery, whether they're like cross, like do, do they even have separate people for TBC and Season of Mastery or do they just kind of cross over when they need to? It's uh, it's actually interesting. Yeah, maybe they're more like, you know, release and sit products and that's why they've been like, you know, no changes has been like a big thing for them. So, like no changes. Uh, so I think, uh, I, I do wonder how, uh, I wonder how it's going to be for them in um, the the rest of TBC. Because uh, I know they have like, I know they have job applications and stuff like that for like QA and stuff like that for like WoW Classic. And I'm just like, is this for like Season of Mastery at this point? Like, what are these like positions for? Um, and if they actually have, like you're saying, like they have to pull resources from like other projects. Well, do they not have dedicated people for the WoW team for this, right? Uh, and if they do why is this like not a higher priority thing for them so it's it definitely means that they need they need people who can work on like critical tasks and people who can work on like novel tasks because if there's things that like have to be done because they're like very critical to the way the game works or plays uh or uh, issues that are coming up then great but then there are also has to be people who work on novel things because quality of life improvements directly affect the players um and are typically uh seen as a little more important to uh to gameplay shit uh by the average person right because those are the more frustrating things yeah. half the time yeah i mean one of the big things is is that they don't classify the server like transfers and mergers and such as immediately critical things and honestly they, yeah. they probably should like if in a lot of ways they probably should view that because long-term longevity of the game how the player feels like people quitting it does feel like, yeah, the team's just really small. They need to add people. They need to implement these systems in place. But something interesting that they did bring up as well in the interview was um, they talked about gold buying. And he did bring up the point that they were potentially looking at increasing the gold ban um, term if you get caught gold buying. So for most people... Right now, they know that they've had friends that have been banned for gold buying. It's usually a three-day ban. You, you, maybe you get some gold taken away depending on whether they caught you at the right time or whatever. But mm. usually, if you get caught, get, caught, get caught gold buying right now, it's a three-day ban. And uh, it's basically just a slap on the wrist unless you get it at a bad timing, then you might miss your raid for the week. But for most people, it's not really that much of a penalty. So we're po talking about potentially making the gold ban longer like we're talking like two weeks or something along those lines i'm curious what your thoughts are on that zarine if they do go ahead and do that gold buying is a lot like prostitution buying a prostitute is illegal being a prostitute is not in some places so it's like they're going after the people who are buying gold not the people selling gold as much which i think is the big issue Right, because if people are selling gold in the first place, they're the ones who should get like the large ban, etc. And you should be able to target those or stop them or put things in place to like you know stop botting. So it feels like you're trying to attack things at the at the leaves instead of the stem. And I feel like they just need to put more effort into that instead of like actually tackling or attacking things at the the leaf level. They should be attacking the roots of the problem. Um, so that that's my take on it. Um, I understand maybe that's not a popular one, but uh, I get it because what they're what they're saying is, if they make sure that nobody's buying gold, then the roots will die off, right? That if none of the leaves are like able to grow, if you know you're not getting any water, etc., if you're not watering them, then the, the roots will just die. So that that's basically what they're trying to do is dissuade people from buying gold enough that the business dries up. Oh. I think you should just be attacking things at the root level. I think it's like the wrong way to go about things, personally, but. That's a personal philosophy. I understand how the other one would work. Uh, but I think it requires a little bit. I, I think it requires more effort to find all of the gold buyers 
then find all of the the bots. Yeah. Well, the thing is, it's it also should, it should be a lot easier to find who the fucking bots <laughs> are. In fact, in order to find out who's buying gold, you typically have to know who the bot is who sold gold or who the gold seller is. So, yeah, uh, like it feels like you you have one thing in front of you, and you just take an extra step to go like cut off this part to like make this part malnourished instead of just attacking the initial problem. I don't, I don't know. It's, it it uh, gets really messy as well uh, if you start targeting the gold bars because where do you draw the line? It, what if the gold's been washed, as Chad is saying, because technically a lot of the gold in GDKPs is probably coming from gold buying, but like there's a lot of people that got your gold through the GDKP that they, they ne never touched the gold. And it, it's very tricky. I know in the interview they did like kind of talk yeah. about that a little bit but it's just it's just a really tricky thing and i remember i remember very distinctly because um one of my characters in aeon online uh got banned for gold buying once upon a time even though i never touched gold but i was an officer mm -hmm. in the guild and someone else bought gold and then traded me the gold and it looked like i was holding a whole bunch of gold for gold selling or something and i i eventually got that ban reversed so, so that was fine but i do know other people in the guild who got hit by that and they, they didn't stick around to try to get it reversed you're just like oh well i'm done uh, i'll see you guys later so it's kind of like tricky it also it, it can promote some false pro positives as well when you're trying to track mm -hmm. the the gold in that way because yep. sometimes it, it can be tricky to tell the difference between someone who's just holding gold or who got given sketchy gold and someone who's actually mm -hmm. bought gold yeah like I, I, I've told this story before, and uh, Menarch just said, Zyrene, what was your story with trading gold from retail? Um, I was doing RBG boosts in retail, and someone told me that instead of like retail gold, which was not worth much to me, um, that they could get me gold on Fairlina. And I was like, oh, shit, because like, you know, I thought there were a lot of people on Alliance Fairlina or Horde Fairlina, et cetera. And I was like, yeah, yeah, yeah like Horde Fairlina gold would be great. And when I go on to my shaman later, my shaman's banned. And what ended up happening is the guy bought gold to that character. He asked me for my character name. I thought he was going to mail me gold. And he just bought me gold off a website. And I wasn't the one who purchased the gold, but I got banned for it. So I'm sitting here going, if I actually like don't like you, and if they up like gold, gold, like buying things, if, sorry, if they up the punishment for gold buying, if I really don't like you, I could just buy gold for you from like a sketchy website that has like for an obscene amount. Like if I don't like Asmund Gold, I'll spend two hundred dollars on money or on gold in game, and that's enough to get him banned, right? Yeah. It's like, but how how would you prove? How would you prove that? You'd have to have the the website's uh, back end, and you'd have to under like see who the person was who purchased the gold. But that's not information that you're privy to in any way, shape, or form as the company. So, it's it causes a lot of other problems. Um, but random random tangent or not completely random but the wow token does this actually solve gold buying and selling from like a bot level i i can tell you website level i can tell I you in everquest it didn't um yeah I'm they, like, they, i don't know they introduced a token but the illegitimate sources were always still cheaper <laughs> so in everquest at least i know that while well, a large, large percentage of people started doing a legitimate token buying through the store there was still i know a lot of guildies who were buying tokens through other websites because the websites were like two dollars cheaper each or whatever it is so yeah. it does it still doesn't actually solve the entire gold uh issue at the core and th th there's also like the entire thing where the uh, I, I said this long ago in one of our old podcasts is that a lot of people don't know but uh wowhead all those companies they they say their their hands are washed off it now, but the conglomerate or the thing that owns them, those guys were literally owners of all the biggest gold selling websites on the internet. The uh, Wowhead was owned by IGE at, at one point in time. IGE is um what was their full name? Uh, but yeah, IGE, Jonathan Yantis, you guys can Google this if you want. But yeah, literally the guys who made tens of millions of dollars with the first gold buying websites in EverQuest, WoW, and, and all these other games. And so a lot of people don't know ThoughtBot, all of those, gold, gold buying galore. Because the company that owns them was literally the same companies that were selling the most gold in the entire internet. So 
Let me, let me tell you, if I owned the realm name Thoughtbot, no. <laughs> <laughs> well, man, the, the meaning of Thoughtbot has really changed over it the years. It has really changed a lot. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. You know, Thoughtbot might just be another name for Booba TV. You know, like just, <laughs> <laughs> just automate automate how to find these people. You know, <laughs> a very different automated task uh, to to what yeah, it was originally told- intended. Yeah, I realized this the other day when I told my friend, oh, yeah, the old the old website was, uh, what was it? It was ThoughtBot. And I was like, oh, fuck. <laughs> it hasn't aged very well at all. <laughs> <laughs> oh, shit. Uh, oh, God, dude. Yeah, but with WoW tokens, the, the money, I guess, just goes to Blizzard. Um, so it, it kind of cuts out those websites and just, I guess they eventually go, hey, it's inevitability that people will buy or sell or trade gold, et cetera. Like, we can't stop it. Yeah, like, the WoW token was like an admission of, we can't stop it and it takes too many resources to stop it for it to be worth it for us, so let's just make money off of it. Um, that's kind of like what I see the WoW token as, right? Yeah. yeah. I think that that's like, yeah, big, big kind of like red flag to me on that. And honestly, I, I don't think we've even seen the the biggest of the monetizations because uh, I had this discussion with other people before where the thing they did for uh, the thing that will make them bazillions of of dollars from WoW is if they do, do exactly what EverQuest did, introduce a one time per server forty dollar one hundred slot bag that you can purchase for for your character. One time per server, and everyone that rolls on it. Well, one hundred percent, like like ninety nine percent of people will buy, it. and because in EverQuest they they bought it. Every ninety nine percent of people that played EverQuest <laughs> definitely bought that bag because all my guildies had the bag. Because when you first join an MMO, the most annoying thing is you don't have enough bag space. Mm-hmm. And if you want to see w- w- what happens when they actually go down that monetization route, they will introduce a giant bag that you can buy, and it will maybe even give you an extra bag slot, and you put it in that bag slot and everyone that plays WoW will buy it once per server. And then they can recycle that every season of Mastery. And you, hey, get your new $40 bag to start off. It's the starter pack for season of Mastery. And, and that, that's honestly where I see, see the monetization going if, if they follow through with how they, they're coupling EverQuest. Hmm. So yeah, wait, wait for the real outrage when they introduce those. Hmm. I don't know if I would buy that. I think I think I'm I'm usually against a lot of those things. Like I'm not I'm not somebody who spends a lot of money on video games. Um, said the guy with four accounts. Um, <laughs> I don't spend a lot of money on things in games that I don't find to be like a necessity at some point, right? Um, I play I played things like fucking Vindictus, which that ends up being pay to win, and I just went the whole game without spending money on it. It's kind of like, you know, if I played MapleStory, I didn't spend any money on it at all. It's like, I don't, I don't buy skins in League of Legends ever, right? I just, eventually when they were able to, you get able to get them with like Orange Essence from DE and shit, I was like, oh, okay, this is cool. So, yeah, it was, I, I usually don't spend money on games that things, I don't find them to be necessary, right? So, I, I, I guess I'll put it this way. I don't spend money on a game to avoid uh, frustration that I can avoid by just grinding or spending more time on the game. I don't usually do that, right? I think character boost is like the only exception because I find that to just be an insane, insanely good value, right? Uh, whereas like bag space, I'd probably just be like, I haven't needed more bags than this. Like I don't have gigantic bags on any of my characters and I have like, like 25,000 gold. I don't have gigantic bags on any of my characters. By the way, and I play, and I play, and I play. How tanks. did you get so much gold? By the way, because I, I, this is side tangent, but, but I, yeah, I, I went into your stream one day, and then I saw like, wait, Zyrene was poor the other week, and now he's got yes. twenty five thousand gold. What, what happened? Uh, I am a main tank in a GDKP where I also get an admin cut, and the admins uh. are only me and another person. So everybody gets like four thousand gold. I get like twelve. I so, see. I see. Yeah. <laughs> because yeah, you, you all, went from, gold, from poverty house all, to very yeah. chan level very quickly the the reason that i went from that i was in poverty house is because i was doing so many raids without a gdkp and then i was like i need i actually that's when i quit um powers i was like i need money i need to join this gdkp so I, that's that's why i have money now is i literally gave up a uh 
I literally abandoned the raid to go do GDKP to fuel all of my characters. So, which, by the way, I think is a core gameplay issue, and it's something I yeah. think wasn't oh, yeah. really covered in the interview because I, I don't think they can cover. It. I don't think they have a plan for it. Um, uh, uh, and I don't blame the interview at all. I, I really like uh, Josh Corbett and, and and Brian Birmingham seems like a really nice guy in all regards. Uh, it's just that it feels like they have no plan to solve any of the core gameplay issues that are really plaguing the game, or like having like there's no long doesn't seem to be a long term future fix for a lot of these issues. So for example, I don't understand why. Like, it literally costs more to raid now than it did in Nax, And they said, like, one of the big things they want to fix in TVC is that, yeah, we don't want people to feel like it's Nax again where it's consumer most galore and people are spending so much every week. But it literally costs more to raid now than it did, did back then. Even haste if potions. you only pos- pop haste potions on bosses, which is why I do. I only use mm-hmm. haste potions on bosses. I'm still spending way oh. more. Yeah, I... I've popped 60 in the last three weeks on my rogue each raid. <laughs> and I hear that I was using a lot. I think I think I use like 15 a week, something like that. Like two on some yep. buses. Three maybe yep. on like KT. Yeah, he spots are Monk W. <laughs> I don't know that's Irene are... money, but I'm still spending w- more than I did in in uh in next Ramos days because next Ramos days was what like two three hundred gold or something and i'd be good for the week usually but but that's because i i'm a melee flask. i don't have to flask yeah. yeah if you have to flask it's more but right now i spend like probably 500 a week with like hay spots scrolls thistle tea all, all of that added up it doesn't make sense that it's honestly i i still don't understand why scrolls is still an issue just just like get rid of them they you don't they're not supposed to be there anyway it's like kind of a side thing they just left in there just get rid of them i don't understand why we still have scrolls oh, you, you you don't like scrolls and you don't like these scrolls of agility and strength <laughs> swift thistle is so expensive swift thistle is getting expensive it's like three yeah. gold now yeah it went from 50 silver to three gold for swift thistle but yeah it's it's so expensive and and i mean these are like core gameplay issues that is costing a lot of people a lot of uh, uh there's a re- reason a lot of people are just kind of burning out and such is all of these kind of add up and then at the end of the day um the the big the big question is how do they slow down the decay because there's always every mmo has the exact same problem is that you you got to try to get that number of people who are joining the game as close as you can to the number of people quitting the game because your game's gonna decay but you just want to slow that down as much as you can generally and uh it, it feels like they they haven't really had any fixes for that which which we'll, we'll talk about as well when we start talking season of mastery in a second but it's they, they haven't really come up with anything that really fixes any of those core issues it seems like they're just coasting and they're, they're doing all these other things one of the things they mentioned in the interview was how they um they brought seasonal mastery and all of that because they want to offer lots of different variations of WoW so that anyone can play WoW in any variety or in the different varieties that they like. But they didn't solve the issue of how do you deal with the fact that people do that and then they quit really quickly and they quit even quicker every time. So I, I just, yeah, I just don't know. I'm disappointed that they're not addressing it, but I also understand that Brian Birmingham can't necessarily address them but i would really like to see blizzard say something or something about the long-term future to fix something so that there's like at least like a glimmer of hope somewhere <sighs> it's a problem that i'm not sure i'm not sure the solution and i don't know if they have one either so yeah, yeah. that's that's the thing right he's like criticize the problem but also don't have our own solution so i'm just like yeah. you know you could throw things out ideas but you never know if they're actually going to work yeah um yeah the season of mastery, the population has gone down a lot, right? Is that what you're talking yeah, about? Yeah, yeah. So he, um, even even just the viewership uh, is is the interesting. I was looking at the viewership stats as well and just seeing how it did. So this here, chat can see, this is the big season of mastery launch, obviously. Giant spike because everyone tunes in for server launch. And the hardcore, hardcore has been doing really well. Hardcore mm-hmm. has been doing very well as uh, on its own. And uh, it's, it's been a huge spike. So at first you look at it and think like, oh yeah, there's a big spike. And if you zoom out enough, if you zoom out enough, you can see like before, just before season of mastery, the peaks were, were nowhere near. Like even now the peaks are higher than, than pre-season of mastery. But uh, if we look at like last seven days, it's, 
you can see there's a uh, we're, we're going into decline mode already it's 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 already tapering off every single day it, it it's tapering off more and more so it's already we got that spike but it's it's not really sticking very well the spike's mm. already kind of collapsing back down again so it seems like a very temporary fix so like wow is that a what is it a almost 20 percent decline in the last seven days just from the seasonal mastery spike to now so it, it's definitely not a long-term solution, but it definitely brought them a lot of, uh, a lot of resubs. I'm, I'm sure a lot of store purchases and things like that, but uh, it, it's not like a long-term solution unless you're just going to launch Season of Masteries more and more, but they said at least a year. So yeah, I'm not sure. I, yeah, I, I'm not sure what their, their solution is here. Uh, the side effect though is that Hardcore is probably like the best viewing experience for a while that anyone has had. I, I've been telling people this... For one, uh, we were talking about this before the podcast started. Season of Mastery Hardcore, great viewership experience. I, I can't wait to see the, the first Ragnaros raid and whether they can actually make it to Ragnaros with enough tanks left over by the time they get there. I mean, just watching dungeons is... Yeah. It, it, adds, crazy. it, it adds a element that's missing from WoW and that there's a, like a penalty. It, it's almost like watching speedruns where you, you see like, yeah, oh, yeah, if someone dies, then they're screwed. It's stakes, right? Yeah. Like, that's why people loved speedruns is the stakes um with with world buffs right um even now like some speed runs people watch like the stakes are high because they're they're on pace to win or they're on pace to like make world record and then something goes wrong um the stakes people like stakes they keep you invested they keep you uh, at the the edge of your seat like naturally we like stakes so when you're watching hardcore every moment is high stakes and I, that's yeah. what i think is missing yeah. Although I will say I do agree with the chat right now. What they're saying, it's uh, it's it's good to watch. I I am I'm not envious of the people playing a lot of the times though when I watch it. Yeah. It's been too oh, soon yeah. for me. And and when I tune into like sometimes I tune into Bobka and I just see oh what what level is he up to? He's been playing hardcore for a while, and I see oh god he he's still level forty. Okay, yeah, that that's why I'm not doing this. Now now I remembered why I'm not doing this, and I'm glad I'm the one watching and not playing. Yeah, he's also leveling with two other people, right? Yeah, yeah so. he's doing like the hardest of hardcore. He has he's to wait so for them hard, to log yeah. on too. No. Yeah. Uh, so it's uh, it, it's been fun to watch. Oh, I, I'm actually really curious to see how that first rate goes for the hardcore guys because I think it'll be really great content. But at the same time, man, I wonder how uh, are they going to bring enough? How how are they going to prepare? Are they going to bring enough tanks, healers to like? I almost feel like they bring 120 people for like like one raid and then they just keep swapping them out as people die is the way it might go but i'm wondering can, like how long it will even take them to get enough people where they feel like okay we can go for ragnaros now yeah i'm i don't know how how i don't know like some of the rules for it like people were saying you can't bubble hearth oh you like, can't well, oh yeah like bubble hearthing is like disabled with the add-on or something that they took out they took out petri flasks on the um on the PTR, that's that's when they took out Petri. So it, it was 100% in the PTR, but I don't know if they took it out. Um, uh, I don't know if they took it out like at that point completely because I know they took it off the PTR because it was on a vendor and people in Warsaw and Gulch were popping Petris back to back to back to back because you had unlimited Petris because you just buy a fuck ton, right? So people were like trolling Warsaw and Gulches by just Petrying. <laughs> um, so I, 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 I know they took it out then for that for that reason but yeah. i don't know if they took it out uh from the game you, you know the interesting thing though is that no one has beaten ragnars yet even on a non-hardcore service and it's been what like 10 11 days now something like that since the release hmm. and i think i believe the first time around it was what like five six days for the first guilds to beat uh ragnaros with apes hmm. and, and such so it's uh there's definitely been a decline in the amount of hardcore people that have hopped on because all the hardcore people are kind of just checking like i know a hardcore people that are playing it but n i don't know many or any that are really actually playing playing it most of them kind of just tourist checking out the launch and uh they're not planning to ever really pick it up properly at the least so it's uh which is honestly what i think is going to be the issue with season of mastery is I it feels like they built a server that's uh that's just going to decay very fast because as much as you want to satisfy the non-hardcore population, the hardcore population is what often drives a lot of the 
inner workings of a server. So even if you don't like the way some people play the game or the hardcore people play the game too hardcore, like you you need those guys to run a lot of the things. Like even in the casual guilds, a lot of times the hardcore players are the ones who are willing to sacrifice and carry the casual players because they're like there may be hardcore players that want to play a little bit more casually or to in a more casual atmosphere, but they're still the hardcore players that are like the core of your raid in a lot of, of cases. So um, I, at least I think that's that's the way it's going to go is that there might be like a massive decline, but as far as content, it's great. But <laughs> yeah, I, I just think I don't really have very good prospects in my opinion for the long-term future of season of mastery. Doesn't, it just doesn't look great. Yeah. And that, I mean, that's why I didn't pick it up. I just think it's too soon. Like you said, it just feels like it's not a... Uh... It just feels like it's not something I want to be a part of because I know it's just going to be a lot of my time now. Uh, it's not a long-term investment. I know as a streamer, it's better for your streaming career to have done Season of Mastery right at the start and just go with it for the next few weeks and then come back to TVC. But as like a player, that makes me it makes me feel like I'm a bad player, you know, like for, for my guild. Yeah. It's one of those things that I, yeah. I feel like... I was talking about this where it's like, if you want to be a good streamer, you're typically like a bad raider. <laughs> yeah yeah to to other people like they don't like you 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 do like stuff that they that they hate you're like trolling and shit in the middle of the raid yeah it's uh it's pretty monka <sighs> but uh I, just to shift topics again uh, since we've been talking about season of mastering classic for a bit uh do you know about the pvp problems irene the giant no. PvP problem which okay. pvp problem is this so um God, Blizzard, please, if, if you take one thing from this podcast, please fix this because it's going to be a massive problem by the end of the season if you don't fix this. So PvP has a 3k MMR cap right now. And PvP is inflating to stupid levels in twos, uh, particularly in, in EU. They are, they are ahead of the curve because... Uh, in EU, they're just way more active. They have more players. They have the private server players and such. And twos is always the most popular bracket. Mm. But if I pull up uh, the twos, people can see here that what's happening is you can only get MMR from someone, I believe it's 126 rating within um, of you. So which means because there's a hard cap on MMR, you can only hit 3k MMR rating the actual cap on your points right now in PvP is 3126 or something ar around there. So it's leading to this weird meta on EU where everyone in the top brackets is now hitting that 3k MMR mark. And the way uh, inflation works in PvP is that the more people that have high MMR and then they pass it on to the teams below them. So it's causing this big kind of mess of P everyone's going to be 3k MMR if this season goes on for like another month or two is that uh, how are they going to do rank 1 when everyone's just coin flipping because everyone's tied at 3126 like does everyone get rank 1 then does like the top 50 teams get rank 1 because uh, it, it causes this really toxic thing as well because you can only get points from a team that is 3k plus or, or is at yeah, that 3k plus because they they need to be within 126. So their MMR needs to be 3k at the cap for you to get points off them. So so it, it's just this weird, really weird uh, meta developing with there, where literally like I I scroll down to the bottom of the top 20 teams and the 20th team on EU twos right now is 2956. And and the cap is thirty one twenty six, and and this is after people are purposely people are purposely losing and re rolling teams and such because they're hitting the cap and and they're just like stuck, so they just re roll and it's kind of like people who smurf in league where they 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 hit the cap and they're like oh okay well let's let's start it again we go back yeah, to the start long, yeah. so they need to do something about this I, I don't know if they want to raise the cap or like what they want to do but something has to be done here because otherwise you're going to hit the end of the season and everyone's just going to be coin flipping. It's not really going to be like a ranking system because no one can go over 3126. Is that like... Damn. 
Yeah. So it's literally just hard cash. <laughs> it's literally hard. So you technically you could hit thirty one twenty six right now if you're in like the the top brackets of players as this inflation hits, and then just sit there and never play again. And you're like technically, I guess, guaranteed rank one because no one can surpass you. What What if they just played Pigs United, right? Wouldn't they get rating from them? Uh, no. Uh, because the MMR, like the actual hidden uh, MMR, is capped at 3k. So you can get uh, points up until you hit 3126, but you can never go over 3126. Because hmm. the MMR is hard capped at 3k. Mm. And th this hasn't happened on NA yet because we have less gameplay, but it, it, it might if, if we get the end of season shenanigans again where everything inflated by like two 300 rating suddenly. Yeah. So, well, uh, um, yeah. the way it worked back in the day was um, if everyone was tied at the same rating, they all got it. Right? Yeah. Um, so, like, for example, uh, if everybody was 3126, it would just give it to everybody who was 3126. But then if you were like 3125, you wouldn't get it. Like, if there were like yeah. a lot of people at 3126. So. So you would have to like get that. <laughs> so everyone's going to go for 3126 and just sit there at the end of the season, which would make uh, end of season shenanigans, I guess, very interesting and very weird at the same time. Because uh, everyone would qualify. Uh, like, yeah, actually, how would you do that? If there's, like, let's say, if there's 20 slots for rank one titles, does that mean the top mm -hmm. 20 teams that are tw 3126 get it then? And then, like, no, I think it's all of them, isn't it? I guess so, yeah. I guess all of them, if there's more than 20. But yeah, <laughs> so, so yeah, this... Cause it's, it's not limited by slots, it's just the... The, the rating, slots, I guess, like, yeah, if they're tied. It, it, it's the, yeah, if they're all... Because it's kind of like... Um, it, in, in a leaderboard, let's say uh, it's like a, a league, right? Let's say we're all tied, two, uh, two wins, zero losses, but then there's a bunch of teams that are zero wins, two losses every team that's 2-0 is first place. And then every team that's 0-2 isn't second, but they're like fifth place, sixth place, seventh place, eighth place, right? Or they're all tied for fifth, right? So it's like they're all tied for first, and then the other teams are all tied for fifth. So yeah, you would basically be tied at the position. To my knowledge, that's how it would work. Um, but also keep in mind, it's, it's gated by teams, not number of players, right? So it's like, it's number of teams, not number of players. So like, even if somebody quit this team, you could have a... a Three's team only have one person get infernal gladiators from it because two people quit the team, yeah. right? So that would and that would still take up a team in the uh, percentage. So I believe it's still off of a uh, number of players, not or number of teams, not number of players. I wonder if this is a way people would sell glad actually. Boost you to twenty one, boost 31, you to thirty one twenty six, and then they Good just God, give you the hard. team, and you that'd just... be so fucking hard. <laughs> play to that try would be to worth so much. That would be worth so much gold, though, because it would be really hard to get you to thirty-one twenty-six. It would have to be like some fucking plot where you win trade and shit. The person <laughs> you're not even guaranteed to like not get banned for it and like lose your infernal gladiator, you know. <laughs> um, and and on top of that, like, oh man, <sighs> yeah, I'm just thinking about the amount of work it would take. Um, God. Yeah, it would just be so fucking expensive. Because yeah. then that, that team would also take up a slot, too. Yeah. <laughs> uh, well, I mean, I, I know a bunch of them have already rerolled. Uh, thankfully, they didn't leave your team sitting at 3126. Oh, although maybe that's in the new meta, is to prove who's the best PvP on EU. How many teams can you cap at 3126 and leave one character <sighs> there? Maybe you can, spell, you can spell your name with the first letter of, of all your teams. That's the way to do it. That's the way to do it. <laughs> Oh fuck! But yeah, uh, so uh, this needs to be fixed. But please, Eddie, uh, I I just don't want to see the NFC shenanigans that will develop if if everyone's just sitting at thirty one twenty six, and then and then the season, it's gonna make rank mm -hmm. one really toxic. Are there any like downfalls of this? If you change it, Uh not really. I I, I think it. It just means it inflates more, but I don't think that's necessarily yeah. the worst. Just it just inflates more. It just means it creates has a grind more. It just creates a larger spread. It means people have to play more to get up there. Get up there, yeah. Uh, yeah, it, it means you can keep raising the cap more and more, and people have to play more to get up there. Uh, 
but it was relative anyway, so... I mean, the big problem was that they never did a full reset either. They did a soft reset yeah, going to season two where people still kept like, if you were 2.6k MMR, you got dropped down to like 2k MMR. So they still yeah. started inflated, which just means that people inflated faster. And now we have a longer arena season as well. And it just compounds on top of that to, to mean mm -hmm. people are hitting these crazy ratings way earlier now. <laughs> in new that Blizzard update, when you hit 3126, you get a message. Congratulations, you can now go outside. <laughs> uh, uh, but yeah, I, I hope to do something about this. Did you see the 520, though, that they're talking about? No, um, I didn't. I, I didn't even know this was a thing until I just stumbled upon it. They're, they're doing like a... I don't know why it's a 520, but Blizzard is doing a... <laughs> five versus five winter brawl hmm. and i've i've heard nothing about it really i just I, I don't know why fives of all things the most memed uh a bracket but apparently it's open so yeah i i, I there's a ten thousand dollar prize pool apparently but it's a uh, regional Seasonal supremacy. I don't know. I guess there might be titles or something. They, they, they don't, haven't really said a huge amount, but I guess it's sponsored by GCD TV. Is it sponsored by them or, or is or it run by them? Just, because yeah, there's the production company and the prize pool is from Blizzard, right? Yeah, I'm not sure. They're not really. They, they just call it the GCD TV Winter Brawl and it's on the GCD TV's Twitch channel. And it seems to be. About... What's, what's on their Twitch channel? Yeah, two years ago they did a Winter Brawl. So. I don't know, maybe it is just a production company. It's like all they have on here. Yeah, so a little, little uh, PVB 20. Uh, I'll, be, I'll be watching it, I guess, maybe. But I, yeah, they need to promo it a bit more because I think most people don't even know that this is even a thing. I didn't even know this was a thing until I was doing research for, for topics. Huh. But yeah, Zarin, to... Uh... Yeah, it's interesting. I, I had no idea either. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, yeah. yeah like, wait, what? And uh, like, it feels like this is something you want to put into your your client or something and then I, I don't know because it feels like blizzard's yeah, just not very good at esports stuff honestly speaking oh yeah, yeah. you i mean you want signups for it put it in your client and shit like that yeah. i mean like it, it's not gonna make you money uh, actually hold on hold on hold on it is in the client wait is it yeah you go to your go to your client so you go to go to like just uh, your burning crusade classic uh, you see it has this, like black black friday sale do you see that yeah i see that Scroll down. Oh, you guys. Oh, I didn't even know it scrolled uh, down. Scroll down. Oh my god. You just got to scroll down. Yeah, I found it. I found it. I found it. <laughs> Chat, for people that don't know, I literally had to go to the Burning Crusade client and I didn't even know it scrolled down, but you have to scroll down while hovering over the middle section of your client. Yep. All the way down. Until you find it. No wonder I didn't know this was a thing. <laughs> yep. <laughs> uh, okay. Well, I mean, at least they had the priorities right there. They're advertising the Black Friday sale first. So we, we knew about that. But yes, they're into our, um, to, to end on a, uh, on a happier topic, did you see the, the all melee raid clear? Of all SSC? melee? Yeah, all melee Koreans did it. They did a full melee clear did of SSC. Did they take our rogue comp? Rogue comp? Uh, <laughs> if, if, if you mean warrior right, comp, then yes. All right, let's see this. Oh, there's a rogue in there. I there's can see one rogue. rogue there's comp. one rogue representation. That, that that's called a rogue comp to me, dude. Like, if you got one rogue, that's that's one more than most comps. So, yeah, it, it only took them five hours thirty minutes. Full melee comp. Well, not full. Uh, they, they had healers, but yeah, no, no. Uh, what what did they struggle with the most? Let's have a look at your lugs. Oh wait, this is this is this is SSC and TK. Yeah, yeah, they did, did both SSC and oh. TK. Oh, they just wiped in TK. Wait, what was it? Wipes. Oh, wipes. They, they one shot all the buses. Did they just uh, Kale, Kale Foss, Kale Foss. Oh here, oh, I guess KT yep. is a little bit tricky as a melee comp. Capernaum. Capernaum. <laughs> <laughs> that, that makes How sense. How are you gonna do Capernaum? That, that makes sense. That oh, does shit. that does make a lot of sense as a word comp. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> How do you make Capernaum? god that's a lot of range damage a lot of just shoot bow <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> holy shit dude uh, 
Yeah, they, they did have a, they did have a vod actually. How, how did how yeah how did they do Capernaum? Can we watch that part? We, we can. Let's, let's have a look. What, what do they do? Did they just zug zug? Prop Paladin runs in, drops Consecrate, runs away. Is that what they got to do? It looks like it. Yeah, yeah. Prop Paladin yeah. is Consecrate <laughs> tank. Click, click, boom. Look at it. <laughs> oh, they are. They literally are. Oh, oh, like a wanding and, and shooting oh, all the bows. Shamans, all the shamans have to lightning bolt. <laughs> yeah, they, I mean, they, they, he's dying pretty quick considering it's it's only like bow and shaman damage. and It's dying pretty quick, he says. <laughs> <laughs> I just love the look on the guy's face right now. He's like, <laughs> <laughs> he's so engaged with the game. Look at him. Wait, how did they beat phase three though? That must suck. Oh yeah, dude. This is this is like, this is gonna be impossible. Because this is super. This isn't that bad in phase at the start. Because you have all the time in the world. Mm -hmm. Okay, so <laughs> all your melee are behind Thaladra just zug zugging. Yep. Yeah, <laughs> all you on see, his like, ass. This, you see this train. <laughs> Following yeah, around. Oh, they already yeah. lusted. Nice. Thaladred's dead, so they do the normal cleave. Wait, do they It'll just like it. tank Capernaum? How do they do Capernaum? Because <laughs> he's still at full. Do they kill him the whole? Do they kill him the whole time with Capernaum up? They just, oh, they just ignore Capernaum. I mean, they they probably could just bring her to the back of the room. Bring her to the back of the room. Put one druid on the paladin. Oh God. <laughs> Yeah, yeah, they probably <laughs> just keep her in the back of the. Oh my god! <laughs> yeah, because you don't you don't have to kill her, right? I guess not. Yeah, they're just leaving. Capernaum's just running around in the back, and she doesn't do enough damage with the uh, when there's the uh, flame, uh, like the 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 buff from the the mace that gives you fifty percent reduced uh, fire damage on the the person that you healed. So you just keep life blooms on him. And I assume you could just keep life blooms forever. Oh, oh, why, why is she? Oh, she coming back. Oh, okay. I was like, oh, Lottie, she running. She running. Oh, God. Dude, Capernaum does some weird shit. I don't know why she does it. Like, everybody will be like, oh, it's because the, the warlock has this thing. You're like the. Yeah, we had Capernaum just randomly run at yeah. our raid the other day, day while targeting the yeah. warlock for, for the yeah, like, I, threat. It was, it was really weird. There's a lot of things people are like, People are like, oh, if nobody's there to soak the con flag, she does that. Or if uh, if it's a gnome, the stairs, like she has to run around. And not, like, I'm like, no, it's neither of those things because we've she's run around when there's somebody in con flag range. She's run around when it's a human. And people are like, oh, it's nether protection. That one will make her do that, <laughs> but it nether protection like uh, it wasn't on the warlock or anything like that. So she'll just do it sometimes. If the person I don't know if they're like walking out of range, I don't know exactly what's going on, but she'll be like completely fine. And then she'll just fucking decide to run through your raid and arcane explosion. It's, this is amazing though. I wonder what happens. I wonder what she does when uh, he gravity lapses because it'll teleport the uh, the paladin and the um the the yeah that's true the druid over here right for those who were like listening to the podcast and not actually watching the video uh we it it's entertaining uh if snow finds a way to like link this somewhere yeah. for the timestamp all right so there's gravity lapse is she okay so yeah she's running in because they did teleport the paladin <laughs> there she goes oh there she comes. so scary wait what here she comes man here she comes <laughs> Oh, so he, he he's, he's going to soak conflict. Soak he's yeah, to soak. he's trying to soak it in. The, eh, wait. And they're they all have to get like away. They've away got, from... Okay, so they're okay. Yeah, they just have to yeah, do that yeah, every yeah. time. Yeah, it just she gets real close. It gets real scary. That's probably the cause of some wipes right there. <laughs> probably. Yeah. yeah, they just bring her back to the end of the room. I, I, so when he dies, does she die too? Or do they got to go fucking range her down? Oh, she disappears. Oh. Yeah, she's gone. Oh, there you go. She just despawns. Now you know. Oh, there you go. Wait, I, I <laughs> He's so happy about this. Dude, <laughs> he, they just made it so hard on themselves. <laughs> <laughs> oh, shit. Oh, fuck. That's... A... <laughs> uh, yeah, so I guess they just do that. Yeah, well, there you go. It's totally doable, guys. And what can be done with warriors can be done with rogues. Right, Zareen? Right? <laughs> right, Zareen? <laughs> right. 
<laughs> See, it's the positivity podcast today. The positivity podcast. Yeah, is that what, is that what we are? Yeah, yeah. The positivity <laughs> podcast. Uh, See, there oh, was one man. rogue. There was one rogue. There okay. was one rogue. And yeah. You know what? He beat he beat two arms warriors. So you know what? Good job. We, we take those. We take those wins. Mm-hmm. mm-hmm. <laughs> I mean, it's not even that bad if you think about it. Five and a half hours for both SSC and TK. It's uh, yeah, it's not worse. great, but it's like I've uh, been worse for sure. Yeah, it's, yeah, it's not bad. It's not bad. Not bad, and that's what we like to shoot for as rogue players. <laughs> yeah. Not bad. Not yeah, bad. yeah. When you come to the melee, come not bad. We take those. Yeah, we take those. All right. Well, I, I think that's uh, that's all the topics I got this week, Zarian. You got anything else? Nope, that's it for me. That's it? All right. Well, yeah. Thank you for popping by, everyone. And uh, we'll see you guys in a a week or two, depending on when the next one is. But yeah, take care, guys. All right, guys. Take care. See you guys next week. Yep. Yep.